Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Stocks on Rails. In this episode, I'm going to be making use of this Bootstrap Icons library, and I'm going to be trying to include some of these glyphs in my application. Here's the page within my application that I currently have under construction. As you can see here, these areas where I'm trying to make use of the icons, they're actually showing up as blank boxes, and that's because the web page can't find the definitions for how to display the icons. And if you look here in the web request section, you'll see that it's trying to make a reference to bootstrapicons.woff, which is the font file containing the icons, and it can't find that font file. It's trying to download it from here, slash font, slash bootstrapicons.woff. The key to solving this is going to be making this file available for the web page download. Here's my Rails template. As you can see, the method that I'm using is I'm using the I tag and applying the appropriate bootstrap classes to it to display the icon that I want. If we go into our node modules directory, which is how I have bootstrap icons installed via NPM, we could see that these classes are defined here in a CSS file, well, SCSS file called Bootstrap Icons. And the way that it's referencing those WOFF font files is right here with this Bootstrap Icons font source, where it's using this URL parameter to build the string that's going to be using to reference the file location. And as you can see here, we have this at font face where it defines the font for those and it sets the source to this value right here. The problem that I'm trying to solve is how do I make these font files that are here in the font slash fonts directory available to my application in Rails. Now the way that I'm doing this application is I'm using the ES build compilation tool here that's going to take all of my CSS and JavaScript and compile it into a deliverable, which then gets processed again by the Rails asset pipeline, also known as Sprockets. And with ES build, I'm using the ES build SAS plugin, which is right here. And this is the part of ES build, which reads SAS files. The way that ES build works is it's going to use this JavaScript application JS file as the entry point for the compilation and it's going to perform these imports and some of these imports like bootstrap come from the bootstrap library which is here in my node modules directory but it's going to go through this and it's going to compile that into a file that gets placed up here in asset builds and then Rails is gonna figure out how to deliver it from there. I put a link to the previous episode where I described this process in the video description if you wanna see that in more detail. As far as the SAS files, I'm importing this application, that SCSS file, and that's what the SAS loader plugin allows me to do, is that I could define this SAS file here, which is gonna have all of my styles in it, and that's going to be included inside of the JavaScript deliverable. If we go back to my application here, let's look at the JavaScript file that it's building and delivering the main file that has all the JavaScript. We'll open this up in a new tab. And I'm going to look here for the SCSS. We scroll down somewhere way here at the bottom. This here, it sets this variable CSS. And it basically has the CSS compiled, the compiled version of those SAS files as CSS that gets put into a variable and then loaded onto the page via JavaScript and then used for the page formatting and the styles. And here within that section, we could look here and see the URL reference that it's doing for the font face for the bootstrap icons. You see here it's trying to reference that file, and, and this is where the reference is coming from that it can't find. So basically, how do we make this fonts slash bootstrap icons available? It took me several attempts to figure out how to get this to work. And in my first idea, I tried seeing what I could do with ES Build's 
directives to try to transfer that file into an area where I could download it. So as we can see here, ESBuild gives you two loaders for transferring files into your build. It has a file loader and a copy loader. So the way that this file loader is described, what it would do is it would take the file and it would embed it into the JS file, similar to how it does with the uh, compiled SAS files. And it'll just kind of make it a string available inside of that single deliverable that it creates. And I don't think that's what I want, really want here because while this would probably work fine for a JavaScript reference to that file, the font file, we're actually dealing with a SAS or CSS reference and it's trying to download an external file there. In other words, I, I don't think there's a way that I could get the CSS to read an embedded file inside of the JavaScript. So file is probably not the appropriate loader to use here. Instead, what I could probably use is the copy loader. And what that would do is it would copy that file into my build output directory and then the Rails asset pipeline could take it from there. Even here you could see that it says uh, this might be useful if you're running additional bundling tools on the ES build output, which I think would certainly mean the Rails asset pipeline. So let's go ahead and try to use that copy loader here and I'm going to do that by including that in my ES build command where I'm using the loader here for the WFF files. And now it should be able to copy those over. Next, what we gotta do is we gotta go to the application.js file and we have to manually import those files so that it knows to include it inside of the build. And we could do that by including the import statements for those particular files. So esbuild is gonna read this and it's gonna notice the file extensions and then it's going to pull those into our build and include them in the builds directory, which is our output directory. So let's rerun our watch. And so I restarted the script here. As you can see there, it's watching. It reran this area of code here, and then it reran the JavaScript entry point file. And look here, it dropped in these bootstrap icon files. And notice that it added these weird things to the names. That's a file hash, and that's to avoid caching issues. And this actually might cause a problem because the reference inside of Bootstrap, you know, if we go here, it's not referencing the file this way. It's referencing it, you know, as plain and then it's appending this to the file. And I'm not sure if there's a way to turn this off. Anyway, let's go back to our application here and try to reload this page and see what happens. And as you can see, nothing happened here. In fact, all of the styling went away. If we go here to the console, we get this error dynamic require of the bootstrap icons file is not supported. So that's causing us a problem. Let's take a look here at the JavaScript file that's being pulled in. And we'll try going looking for this WOFF file reference. And as you can see here, it's doing this type of require statement. And I think the reason that we're getting this error message is the way that it's calling it here with this require. It has something to do with ES6. But if we look down here, that's not gonna really matter because we still have this problem in that the URL being referenced for this particular font is using this same path. And even if we were able to successfully import the file with the dynamic require, the CSS is still not gonna be able to find the file because ES build changed the file name and we've got this reference here without the hashtag in it that ES build uses. So this method of using the copy loader, I haven't been able to get it to work. So if the ES build loaders are not enough to get this font file copied into our build directory and the application files are available for download, Maybe what we could do instead is try to use the Rails asset pipeline to make that font file available. So as you can see here with Rails, you could add an asset path to the sprockets pipeline 
and it will make any calls to that directory available like you would a public file. And we could do that by going into our Rails application here in the config initializers and you could drop it in any one of these files. You could also drop it in your application.erb which gets read before the initializers. But this assets initializer is a good place to do this. What we could do is we could just drop this line of code right here. And what that will do is it will add our node modules, bootstrap icons, font directory to the list of things that are downloadable from the application. So here's node modules, font, and then everything here will be available. So I'm going to delete this junk here. I'm going to go back to our build.js, get rid of these loaders, and then we're going to rerun this. Oh, got to get rid of this reference too. And then we're going to rerun this, and then we're going to see if those references now work inside of our application. So let's reload this web page. And we still got the same problem. It's trying to look here inside the fonts, bootstrap icons. Can't find it. If we go here, the uh, reference is going to be exactly the same as it was. So what happened? Why isn't that available? Well, it's because it's trying to download this from this subdirectory fonts, but Rails actually puts this stuff inside of the assets directory. So if we do that, then a download dialog box will come up and then it will allow us to try saving this bootstrap icons file that we just referenced. So the URL actually is different. Instead of fonts, it should be assets. So how can we actually change the path that it's trying to download from? So we have the file available. Maybe we just need to change the reference inside of Bootstrap somehow. So another way that we could do that is by using our SAS loader tool. If we go here to this documentation, one of the options that we have is to run a pre-compile stage where we could change that link. So in the SAS loader documentation, one thing that you could do is rewrite URLs and this is made exactly for this circumstance where you have a hard reference to something like in your style sheet that you want to change the URLs to something that it could find. And basically what it would do is you could add this pre-compile to the list of options here in the SAS plugin. And then you could run this regex here to replace the URL with the new path name. So basically we would take this pre-compile function here. We go to our SAS loader configuration and then we could drop something in here like this. And this could help out, but here's a problem is what is it searching for with this regex? It's searching for this URL here. It's going to try to replace whatever's inside of that. If we go back here to the bootstrap icons, what it will try doing is it will try replacing it'll try looking for this string here with this URL and replacing it. However, I don't think this is going to work out exactly the way that script intends for it to work out. And here's why. So let's take this particular string. We'll go to a, a website here for testing regular expressions and we'll drop that in there. Let's see what that default regex gives you. And it's not really finding anything in this capture group. Yeah, this default regex isn't quite what we're looking for. If we had something like this, however, where it didn't have the dollar sign reference, see, it's able to find this. It's expecting a format like this with the period and then the file name, and it could do the replace on this. But the way that this is formatted, we'd have to change it, and we certainly can. We certainly can have it set up to look for this bootstrap icons font file and you know change the um, inclusion here but maybe we don't even have to do that because the, the way that the reason that I don't like getting too specific here is that I feel like it's messy code it could be hard to understand somebody else looks at the code they may not understand what you're doing and what you're looking for in that 
pre-compile stage and why. Maybe we could just change the variable here. So if you look here at this bootstrap icons thing, how it builds this, so it has fonts directory. Okay, so that's where it gets appends the fonts from. So it uh, it'll replace this with fonts, and then it'll have the uh, font file there, and then the hash. Basically, it builds it there, and we just need to change this directory here, I think, from fonts to assets, right? Well, notice how it has this default here, and this means that it's only going to set this value if it's not set already. Let me show you here in the SAS documentation, we have default values. So if you have that default flag set, it's going to set that variable, but if you already set it, then it's not going to set the variable at that point where you have default. It's basically a default setting if you haven't set it already. So that means that if we go to our application.scss file, and if we go here above where we're defining our bootstrap imports, we can set this variable here, and we could change that fonts to assets, and I think this should work. So our watcher automatically detected the change. Go back to our page and try to refresh it now. And booyah, it's loading the files as we expected here. And it's able to find that reference to the bootstrap icons file. So anyway, I hope this video was useful. I hope it taught you a little bit about how ES build and SAS works and how Rails works. I know it's a pretty simple solution that I came up with, but I think it was kind of an educational journey to showing you exactly how these tools work from the inside out. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. See you in the next video.